Hello? Yes. <clears throat> I stand on their shoulders. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're having a good morning so far. The screen down here at the front has um, died on us completely. So um, where we always usually look down there for the words and what we're doing, it's not there today. So the music group are I've not got a screen to look at, and neither have I, so if I have to turn my back to look at the big screen, do forgive me. So one of the things that Anne has asked me to say in the notice is, if anybody happens to just have a 32-inch plus screen lying around at home that they really don't need anymore, we, we need one. Um, so um, just, you know, do ask around, and if anybody has got a spare screen going there, please consider donating it to church, because it does actually make a huge difference having that down there so that you've not got to have reams and reams of paper printed off with all your um, prayers and, and things like that. So do forgive me if I have to turn my back on you this morning. Um, people are still coming in pa packing boxes, which is fine, because that was really what I wanted to be happening this morning. Um, I'm not going to be up here for long. We're not doing a lot of talking and listening, um, doing some singing, and I want to talk to you about the boxes and what, what they are going to be doing, and then invite you to be doing more with your boxes after that short time together. But I'll go into that a bit more later. Um, just a couple of things Anne has asked me to mention. The Light and Hope service is next week, not at the end of October as normal because um, we've brought it forward because of the bicentennial celebrations, uh, which of course is on the 30th of October at three o'clock. So bicentennial celebrations, 30th of October, Light and Hope service, next Sunday and I'm sure somewhere along the line there is cake and people needed to help with things like that um, but I haven't been given those instructions of who you need to speak to so I'm sure if you drop their office an email or give them a ring they will be able to tell you where you are best to help okay I think that was that right I've got to turn my back on you sorry having to do that, am I? Oh, no, sorry. 
Okay, so um, let us just still our hearts and our minds this morning because I know it's been a bit chaotic as you've all come through the door. Hopefully, what did you call it, Steve? A beautiful chaos. I'll leave you to decide that for yourselves. So close your eyes, let's close our eyes and just uh, still our hearts. Let us pause and consider God's point of view. God is out ti outside time and space, for God created both. When we pray, God hears us. When the time is right, God responds. When we pray, God knows our needs. When his time is right, God meets our needs. And so we're going to uh, worship together. We've got two songs together now. Um, so sit, stand, however you feel comfortable to join us in Praises Rising. One, two.
Just a very brief um, introduction to what we're going to be doing today. Link to Hope um, with the boxes that you've been packing as you come in. They are a charity that offer help to people of all backgrounds, regardless of race, colour or creed, with no qualifying criteria other than that they are poor and marginalised. Now at the moment, what we've done with our boxes is the essentials, the priority items at that top of the list in that little box. They're all the things that they ask should be in every single box. And there are other items, as some of you saw, on that side of the West End. And that's where, during the service, um, when you're thinking about this or however you're feeling, have a thought to whether you want to fill that box for a family or for an elderly person. Because underneath your list of the priority items, there's two more columns. One says family, one says elderly. And there are different items that go in depending on whether you choose a family or an elderly person's box. So have a think as we're going through the service, which one is on your heart? Is it to fill a box for somebody who's elderly or for a family? And then at the end of the service, I'm going to invite you to um, go and find the other items and they need at least five. It's suggested five more items, but it's basically what you can fit in the box off of those lists. Okay, so I will remind you of that later on. But we're thinking about people who are poor and marginalised and who need help regardless of their background, sorry, regardless of race, colour or creed. I'm going to ask Chris to come and do our reading for us. Yeah. 
and Chris. We are going to sing uh, Go Peaceful now. Um, again, it's that song that um, whenever we sing it, it always seems to stir emotion in people. So please feel free to just sit and listen or to join in. Don't, please don't feel that you have to stand. Um, just be still and just feel how you would like to feel while we sing this song together. So on the screen is a map of um, Eastern Europe. When I was looking um, a bit more into today's service, I didn't really know much about Link to Hope, I confess. I just thought it was about shoeboxes at Christmas. So I did a little bit more research, and they do a lot more than just shoeboxes at Christmas. But I also needed to familiarise myself with where in the world these countries were. So it's, I know it's not particularly brilliantly clear, but um, they work in Moldova, Ukraine, Bulgaria, and Romania. Now, we can see Ukraine is quite a like, big purple bit, with Romania just underneath it. And then um, Bulgaria is the yellow bit under Romania, which is probably no good telling you that if you, you're not very good with colours. But Moldova isn't actually on there. I had to find a number of 
different maps before I could find where Moldova was. Um, and it's, it's really quite a, a tiny place. So these people, they work throughout the year with their projects, I say not just at Christmas. They are a charity driven by Christian principles and they run social projects and also education projects. The social projects include building shower blocks, providing community washing machines, prison visiting, community outreach and rehabilitation programmes. And their education projects not only provide learning for the children, but give them the opportunity, opportunity was the word they used, not just give them somewhere to play, it gives them the opportunity to play in a safe space and to learn how to play. Because these children don't have that space, they don't have an opportunity, they don't maybe know what playing is. Um, and I remember witnessing that in Kolkata the first time I went with the children. I know it's slightly off target, but the children were given a green space and they didn't know what to do with it because they lived under an, a bypass and they didn't know what a green space was and what was it for. And they ran wild, didn't they, Alison? <laughs> and they loved it and it was a joy to see them. So that will be the same here. They're providing education and they're providing safe spaces and opportunities for children to play, which is hard for us to think about, isn't it, when we look around and we see our school playgrounds and full of children and being in my garden and I can hear them all laughing and screaming at lunchtime or whatever it is. It's just lovely to hear. And I wonder how much of that is heard in these countries. So in the reading that Chris did for us, um, it says that the outpouring of gifts and offerings was totally spontaneous. Now we know that the filling of the shoe boxes is not spontaneous. It's been well organised by the charity. It's been organised <laughs> by us here. And Mick and Jill, I have to say, thank you. Uh, they've been amazing. They came in in the week and sorted everything out so it was less of a jumble. And then yesterday they were here for a couple of hours helping me again to get it like it is today, so that we've been able to come in this morning and have a bit of a method going on there, a bit of a... So thank you to you both so much for your help this week. It's been great. So not spontaneous. But our giving of items to fill the boxes or financial donations, that comes from God working in our lives. That's because we have a desire to help the poorest to bring relief to those in need. That's not because we do it because we want to feel good, but God is putting the desire in our hearts to, to do that, to help people in need. So God is working in all of us through this. And that phrase, do what you can, not what you can't. I don't know about you, but when them charity charities rattle their boxes at me or they knock on my door or there's a great big appeal on the TV for donations. I sit there thinking, I know I should, but I realistically can't and I feel really guilty for that. Um, and I, I find that quite a difficult thing for me to do, to walk past somebody or to stand at the door listening to somebody and I agree with everything they're saying to me, but I can't give to everything. I can do what I can do. And that might only help a few. But somebody else, hopefully, is helping the others that I can't. Still doesn't stop me feeling a bit guilty. Going with the boxes. Somebody will be taking those boxes to those countries. And we can't all do that. We can't all just physically go, but OK, we're going to take a shoe box. Because that wouldn't be the best way of doing it anyway. But we can't physically be visiting places where there's need. But by contributing to the projects, we are spreading love, perhaps hope, where it's needed. Whatever the size of our contribution, we know we will be making a difference. We may not be able to make a financial contribution or buy the items that we, but we can pray. Praying for those in need is just as important as the physical relief. So if we all do what we can, as it says in the reading, we're working together. One person's surplus will match another person's deficit, helping things to become even. Nothing left over to the one with the most, nothing lacking to the one with the least. 
Do what you can, not what you can't. Will, would you like to come and lead us in our prayers? The prayers are about linked to hope. And the response when I say, Lord, in your mercy, is build your kingdom. How do I get from shoe boxes to building? Well, partly they're shaped like bricks. In some places, life is very hard with cycles of generational poverty, people struggling, struggling to survive, vulnerable people seemingly at the bottom of a heap, marginalized and bypassed. Lord, in your mercy, build our kingdom. Let's start in Bulgaria, one of the four linked to hope's outreaches. It's in the EU, but with a struggling economy. It has a minimum wage, one of the lowest in Europe, but also one of the lowest cost of living. It's got good transport, but rural areas are underdeveloped. It has an ageing population. Many lack basic amenities. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. In our brick-shaped boxes, we have helpful things. Perhaps you could put the box in your hands. Open it. Perhaps soon we'll have some tools in yours, torches or magnifying glasses. Maybe hold the candles and hold your box in your hand and pass it on to Link for Hope with your love. They're just little things. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. We already have links with Romania. Link to Hope work is in the north and east of the country. Work includes kindergartens. Imagine the opportunity to learn, to catch up with others better educated. What doors might open over the years to come? Other work from Link as Helen said, was building shower blocks, perhaps running water in villages that had none. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. Also in the boxes, fun things. Find the game, and soon there might be crayons or toys or a teddy. They're not life-changing. Who can be sure? Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. I'm going to say little about Ukraine, which also receives shoeboxes in the south and west of the country. And you can build your own prayers in a moment of silence. How many brick houses have been levelled and need rebuilding? People whose nerves and anxiety and loss will need rebuilding work for years to come. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. In your boxes are items of warm clothing, perhaps a scarf or a hat. Some may have a hot water bottle or warm socks, chocolate. Not enough, but something. There aren't enough things. There aren't enough shoe boxes. 
it's not just us sending hope. It's not just Belper churches. Not just Derbyshire. It builds up these little gifts. We stand with lots of givers, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. In Moldova, in the north and east, Link to Hope have provided washing machines, so no hand washing of clothes and heavy bedding. Life's a bit easier there. They also run school clubs. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. Are the cleaning things in your box? Giving something for self, for me. Shampoo, a hairbrush, a lavender bag, soaps. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. We end with a plea, Lord. Bless our small generosity and magnify its good effect on health, on education, lifting poverty. We pray for providing of, un of employment and fair wages. Some people have no records, no official paperwork, but are known by you, Lord, with love. Maybe they're not known in their own country, accessing social care and schools and aid tends to hang on cold officialdom. But if you have no money to get proper birth certificates, etc., it costs. Lord, in your mercy, build your kingdom. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Lord's Prayer is a full and sufficient, if short, example of prayer. May our small boxes be full and sufficient to show your love. Join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to um, stand and sing again now. Um, we're going to sing Living Hope. We, we had this uh, last week, music team played this with us. Um, and it is a fairly new one, I think, to some people. So we thought we would um, join together and sing it again today. So uh, please stand while we sing Living Hope.
So while we're still standing, um, I hope that you've had some thoughts now about whether you would like to continue to pack your box for a family or for an elderly person. If you're not sure about that bit, there are still plenty of basic boxes that need the essentials in. So if you would prefer to just get to that point in a box, please pick up another box and do those bits, but remember to tick what you've put into the box and then the other bits can be added. But if you would like to continue to um, fill a box, um, just take your time. There will be obviously coffee as normal. Um, and just please remember to tick what you've put in, choose family or elderly, and then leave that piece of paper in the box so that it, then when it's all wrapped up, we know who's getting what. So thank you for taking part this morning. Thank you for what you've done with the packing because that makes half of a job and it makes it a lot, lot easier to now do the rest of it. So thank you very much for joining in with that. And for, of course, all the donations that people have brought for the boxes. Um, I'm sure they will be absolutely delighted to be received um, when they arrive at their destinations. So as we're standing together, let's just say this prayer. Lord our God, you promised to stay awake. 
You protect us. You hear all of our prayers. You want us to keep talking to you. You are God of everything, and we look up to you. Bless us as we trust in you. Send us out to live and work and pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And we have one last song, fairly obvious one. So join in, um, I will carry on packing your boxes. Everybody here in his hands is God, everybody here. 